we have yet another EV startup looking to change the game. Guys, I want to talk to you all about Slate Auto. Timon and I had an awesome opportunity to go to Los Angeles and see this Slate truck and SUV in person, talk to Slate representatives, and learn about Slate. Let's talk all about Slate. <laughs> Now, you've probably seen the news, $25,000 EV backed by Jeff Bezos, what's going on? And that starting price is true. Slate is looking to start their Slate truck in the mid 20,000s and then with the $7,500 tax credit, which they're expecting to stay, would put the Slate truck under $20,000 as the starting price, which is pretty good. And we'll talk about specs in just a second, but first impressions, seeing this thing uncovered, I was impressed in a sense. This gave very 70, 80, 90s retro vibes. It reminds me of the Bronco Sport and these designs already work well with people. Slate wants to keep costs down with production. They would be producing the Slate truck in the Midwest. They've already found a manufacturing facility, which is a good sign. A lot of EV startups have trouble with that and I liked it. I think it was a good design and I think Slate is on the right track. It's not too crazy like a Cybertruck. It doesn't have an insane light design like a Rivian. It isn't huge like a Hummer. It is a basic city truck. It isn't a full cab like your Maverick, but it is a truck so it does have a bed and will still serve as a good truck. Slate also has their SUV and more hatchback styled versions of the Slate truck. It's all of the same vehicle. In fact, the Slate SUV that you're seeing on screen here, we watched the Slate team transform the Slate truck into the Slate SUV in about an hour and a half. They added the wrap, the seats, the SUV cover. They pretty much changed the vehicle into an SUV from a truck in an hour and a half. And we were pretty impressed. And this is the ethos that Slate is going for. Do it yourself. They want owners to be able to buy parts, service the vehicle themselves. If they want to install things, change things, customize things, you can do it all by yourself, which I think is a good idea. I think the right to repair and the right to be able to pick what options you want are a good thing. And I'll get into the problems with this setup and the logistics of it all in a minute, but that's what Slate is all about. They wanna keep their production costs low. So every Slate truck, again, that comes off the production line, will be the exact same, and they will transform it into their SUV or hatchback. You've likely seen some of the pictures Slate has been advertising with their guerrilla marketing tactics, putting Slate vehicles out there in Southern California for people to see, and that's the Slate truck. And while they may look different on the outside, underneath, and, and from a production standpoint, they are pretty much all the same vehicle. Now, let's talk about the specs for a bit. Now, I don't have the spec sheet, in front of me, but a 120 kilowatt max charging. I think it's about an 84 kilowatt hour battery. Then they'll have a small like 50 kilowatt hour battery. It'll only be rear wheel drive, a thousand pound towing capacity. Didn't remember us getting in a specific payload capacity, but this isn't your heavy duty truck. This is not an F-150 Lightning. This is not a Rivian R1T. This is not a Tesla Cybertruck. It starts at like $20,000. So I don't expect much, right? Don't expect a bunch of performance and features. 120 kilowatt peak charging for an 84 kilowatt hour battery isn't the best. You know, at peak 120 kilowatts, that's a pretty long time if the charge curve is flat. And for most EVs where the charge curve isn't flat all the way from 10 to 80, it could be over an hour to charge your slate truck. Is that a compromise that you're willing to make for an EV this cheap? Let me know down in the comments below. But on the other side of things, rear wheel drive. So this isn't going to be your off-roader while you can off-road rear wheel drive vehicle. This isn't something that you're going to be taking through the mountains. This will just be a good daily driver with a truck bed. And then on the towing capacity side, towing capacity is honestly bad. I mean, a thousand pound towing capacity, the Tesla Model 3 has an 1100 pound towing capacity. So this thing isn't going to be a workhorse. It's just going to be an EV that takes you from A to B, I imagine. And for the 
times that you're going to need some utility, you're going to need a truck bed or a pretty massive frunk, you'll have that available with the Slate truck. It is also worth mentioning that this does have a Tesla J3400 charging port. We're starting to see more automakers switch over to J3400, Nax, the North American charging standard, Tesla supercharging. Now let's move into the interior. I was sitting down watching the presentation with the other media journalists who were there and they have a slideshow and I see manual windows. And I'm like, what the hell? Manual windows in 2025? What? Yeah, this thing, the base version will have manual windows, which is like absurd. I mean, if it works with keeping your costs down and people don't are, are okay with that compromise, I guess it works. But yeah, manual windows. There is an option where you can upgrade to actual window switches. So you can just have a switch. And that is something that you'll actually be able to do yourself. You can buy from Slate. You can have them install it in your vehicle from production, or you can have it shipped to you after you've received the vehicle and you can install it yourself. They want this vehicle to be very modular. They want everything to be easy to install, but that's not the only thing insane about the interior. There's no infotainment, which was even more absurd to me. I mean, actually the window switches caught me off guard. They're being manual windows, but there's no infotainment screen. I think this is something we're so used to seeing with every new EV from Rivians and Teslas and Lucids and Polestars and Fords and GMs, a giant screen in the center. This does not have that, again, to keep costs down. And you will be using your phone. You will be plugging your phone into your Slate truck, and that will allow you to see all of your vehicle data. Of course, there is a binnacle, so you'll be able to see what gear you're in. There's a uh, parking brake. There is uh, traction control on and off. You'll be able to see your range, your mileage. But if you want to control things like music with your own Bluetooth speaker, this also doesn't have a radio. <laughs> if you want to control the music, if you want to control navigation, all of that can be done within the Slate app. And the Slate app will interact with your other phone apps. And so I don't want to explain it. I think it's kind of hard to explain. So instead, let's talk to Slate's team about how the interior phone infotainment app works. All right, so we are here in the Slate. Technically not the truck anymore. It's been transformed into almost an SUV. And I wanted to go over the software in a bit. So unlike most cars, this doesn't have a giant infotainment screen, right? That's cost and for a lot of people it's clutter. You're using your phone instead. Can you kind of walk us through why and how this sure. works? Yeah, absolutely. So what we wanted is really kind of enable our customers to bring the technology they love, the technology they're used to uh, into the vehicle because everyone's digital life today is on our phone. So what you are looking at right now is basically the welcome screen of the of the application. So the Slate app shows you as soon as you um, put it on the phone mount, it connects to the vehicle, it shows you the current range that you have, but more importantly, visually, how much distance can you cover with this? But at the same time, it also shows you the concentration of charging options that you have. So you'll see all the charging locations and the bigger the bubble, the more the greater the number of chargers you have. Now, if you, because we all, one thing that we do, of course you can interact, so this is a mock-up uh, mock version of the application, obviously. Okay. Once you've started driving, what you want to do is basically uh, navigate, yeah, just listen, I'll do it again. Once you start you know, uh, driving, what you want is listening to audio. So either you're going to be swiping naturally to your music application or use a shortcut audio and go to your favorite music app. You know, it's the default uh, Spotify player. But then as I drive, I've been driving a bit. I started with 55 miles of range and I've reached 30 miles now. So the app actually will actually give me a notification that tells me that I only have 30 miles left. So from this point forward, it's really on me. Maybe I'm just five miles away from home so I can just wait until I get home and I plug in at, on, on my home charger. Or I want to top off or I want to fully recharge. In that case, I can click tap on this notification and I can see the most convenient chargers I have in this area. And once I found one that actually works for me, then I can just simply tap. And then the destination is handed over to my favorite navigation application. In this case, I'm an Android user, I love Google Maps. And then uh, the destination is hand handed over to Google Maps. And as I drive to my destination, uh, right when I arrive, then I have another notification that offers me to go over uh, the um, 
uh, instructions on what you need to do with a charger. Because we do know that uh, many of our customers are going to be first time uh, EV owners. And you want to tap on that notification, in this case, plug and charge, then I've got a quick refresher of the things that I need to do when I need to do plug and charge. Awesome. So yeah, you're using your phone to control your slate, which I think presents some challenges. And again, it's another compromise that I think some people are willing to make. I mean, if it is just a truck that's going to take you from A to B, and I think for so long, people have been wanting cake trucks, you know, those tiny Japanese trucks that have no radio, no speakers, really just a binnacle showing your mile per hour and your gears, like it's really a base truck. I would compare the slate truck to that, but if you want to have an infotainment, if you want to have navigation, if you want route planning, all of that will be controlled within the Slate app. I feel like something like this would probably work best for fleets. I also want to add that this truck would probably work best in another country, primarily the continents of Europe and Asia. I mean, the United States is so focused around car infrastructure, having big cars, big SUVs, big trucks, something like this might sell in the United States, but I think it would sell better in the likes of Europe, all of those European cities with all those Citroen AMEs and Asian cities with small roads and small cars. This is a truck that's made in America, designed in America, built in America. And when I asked about selling in other countries, that wasn't on their list of things yet. So we'll see if that changes in the future. Now, Slate has a pretty comprehensive team of experienced people, many coming from the likes of Tesla, Harley Davidson, Rivian, Ford, GM. A lot of them are experienced in automotive. And so I think that's going to help, of course, Slate excel. You want to have people who are experienced in this industry. So good for them. I think what makes me think that this EV company will do well better than, you know, the past. We have Nikola, Canoe. Bollinger. Not everyone makes it. Of course, a few survive. Look at Rivian and Tesla. But the fact that they already have a manufacturing facility, I think is a big part of what brings success. And when speaking with the representatives of Slate, it seems like they have a pretty sturdy financial backing. And those are two of the main things that I feel like you're going to need when excelling as an EV startup. You need the infrastructure. You need the place where you're actually going to build them. And you're gonna need the finances to be able to bankroll this company until it makes its own money, until it makes profit, until it makes revenue. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. The fact that Slate is looking to produce the exact same vehicle off the production line and then essentially change and add options depending on what you order after the fact, I think presents a lot of challenges. I mean, specifically the logistics of having to scale all of the parts that you're going to need, depending on what options people pick. You got to think like Tesla, Tesla has like five paint colors, maybe three wheels. You only allow one of those wheels. If you get the performance version, you know, a lot of our software upgrades, like there aren't that many SKUs. Rivian, they have a lot more tire options, wheel options, paint options, same thing with Ford, but they don't have so many SKUs that it sounds complicated. This sounds complicated. You're going to have this base truck, which I imagine they'll sell the most out of, but they're going to be selling wraps. So again, there's no paint shop, but they will be allowing customers to pick whatever wrap color they want. So they'll have like a color wheel. And if you want to pick some random color of hot pink, you're able to do that. And they'll have that printed out of, you know, a sheet of vinyl for you know car wrap and they'll ship that to you and you'll be able to do it yourself or you can pay slate and they'll install it for you same thing with the interior everything from the speakers to the window switches rather manual windows to the leather in the seats whether you want heated seats or not like all of this are options even the fact that there is a center console that will also be an option i think that's just way too much now when i ask this question, like, does this seem like too much? I was, they were kind of dismiss dismissive. They were like, no, this, this should be fine. But I don't know. We're going to have to actually see this in practice, see what this looks like having to produce a vehicle with 
thousands of SKUs, thousands of options. And while it is good that if you, let's say you want a specific trim, you want certain wheels, you want certain paint, whatever the options you want, you're able to get down to whether the car has heated seats. You don't have to pay for the entire heated weather package, right? You're just paying for the heated seats. It's good that they're allowing more options, but I also think it just presents a lot of challenges for an EV startup, especially company this early in the game. If Rivian or Tesla or Ford were to do something like this, then I could get it. But Slate, I don't know. There's again, there's a lot of logistics behind EV companies and they're just complicating it by introducing all of these options. I hope I'm making sense. Slate says their target audience are the majority audience who are looking for a cheap daily driver, something to get them from A to B. They're looking to drive margins through accessories. And so they likely won't be making a huge margin or a margin at all from the base slate truck, but they'll be making money off of those accessories. But there are a lot of parts of the slate truck that show that they're trying to keep production costs down. For instance, the door handles on the exterior are literally the same door handles that are in the interior. They're just on a different side of the door. Same thing with the tail lights. These tail lights are just flipped. I even heard that the headlights are from a supplier they found on Amazon. So you can see, right, they're looking for a lot of off the shelf products to pretty much help make this truck. They're not trying to complicate things by building their own supply chain and building their own parts. They're trying to find suppliers who already have these parts and, you know, can make them for them. Now, again, this then adds costs. We already know when you find a supplier, especially as a new company, there are going to be higher costs and it's known to be cheaper to produce things in house, you know, everything from the panels to the window switches to the seats, producing them in house is cheaper. But again, Slate thinks that they will be able to pull it off. And if they say so, well, I guess we'll have to sit and watch. I think selling a vehicle where you have to add on a lot of options also just complicates things for the buyer, right? I think a lot of people, especially at this price point, they just wanna buy the most loaded version at the cheapest price. And so if you give me you know, a $25,000 starting price and I continue to add on options, how expensive are these options? Soon a $25,000 vehicle turns into a $45,000 vehicle. I would rather them just try to load the vehicle at the lowest price, let's say that's $30,000 and it has everything down to the infotainment, down to heated seats, down to actual window switches, then, yeah, I think that makes a better deal. Now, Slate says that they're going to have, I guess, certain packages or popular trims that people can select from. So kind of like trims that you would see with Rivian or Tesla or Ford, Slate will be doing the same, but they're really trying to push consumers to make their own vehicle with the options that they want. And again, if you want a new option, let's say you want to change the color of your Slate truck, if you wanna take out the manual windows for window switches, you're able to do that and you can go to one of their service partners and have that done for you, or you can do it yourself. And because Slate isn't building the battery or motors themselves, they'll be looking to work with a partner. I'm not sure if they found a partner yet, but it didn't seem like they had yet and that they are open to working with anyone. So maybe they'll work with Tesla or Ford or Rivian or Lucid on integrating some of that technology into their truck. Now I'm sitting here thinking, what else is there to talk about? But I don't think there really is. Of course, as I said, we have our reviews video and that will be linked down in the description below. But Slate as a company, I think again, they have the place where they're gonna be producing the vehicles. They've shown us what they're looking to build. And this prototype vehicle looks production intent. I think that's something that I've been kind of annoyed by these companies building concept vehicles and them not looking like they could actually be produced, right? They're these extravagant designs. It looks production ready. They have the facility, they have the funding. There isn't even an entire infotainment or software that I can talk about. And so, yeah, I guess it leaves the end of this video. And I guess I'll pass this question on to you. What do you think of the Slate truck? Everything down to its specs to how Slate plans on selling the vehicle. There's a lot that goes into starting an EV company and like every EV startup, I am still skeptical, but I am hoping that they actually make this thing, especially at that price. I mean, starting $25,000 with the tax credit under $20,000. I think a lot of people will be looking forward to this truck. Again, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. My name is Isaiah, this is Out of Spec Bits, and I will see you guys in the next one.